In this tutorial, we'll be using a macro that's included with the downloads. In the future, these will be included with RailClone. Keep an eye out for updates, and if prompted, you can make sure your macros are up to date by clicking on the Update button in the RailClone general rollout. This will open the Update Manager from which you can download the latest versions of our libraries. Just to note here that if you haven't watched part 1 of this tutorial, please make sure you do so before tackling this video, as the Plank UVs should be set up in a specific way for the technique to work. Import the Rail Clone object from the assets included with this tutorial into your scene and open the Style Editor. You'll find five macros already present. Each one represents a different floor type. In this example, we'll be using the Herringbone floor macro. Rail Clone uses closed splines to determine the floor area. To select one from the scene, add a new spline node and wire it to the macro's spline input. Next, go to the Properties panel and use the Object Picker to select a spline from the scene. Next you'll need to add the plank geometry. Add a segment node and go to the properties panel. And again click on the object picker button and select the plank geometry from the scene that we created in the previous video. That's it, your floor will be generated. Let's take a look at some of the settings. Around the boundary of the floor, depending on the pattern, you may see some gaps. To remove these, increase the expand property which changes the size of the array before it's clipped by the spline. If you wish to change the direction that the planks run, you can use the Z rotation property. Padding allows you to add spacing around the planks. And random Z translate will create some stepped unevenness in the board by randomly offsetting along the Z axis. It's best to use small values here unless you're creating an old dilapidated room. In a similar vein, the random tilt property will randomize the rotation of each plank. There's also a double option for a different type of herringbone style. Here we've only looked at the herringbone. The other macros have a few different options. For example, the chevron macro requires you to enter the height of the plank in order to correctly calculate the spacing. And the basket weave macro has options to control the number of repetitions on the X and the Y axis independently. And finally, the Planks macro has options to randomise the height of rows and to randomise the offset of the boards. So there's lots of controls here, but whichever macro you use, today we're focusing on the options that allow you to automatically extract the planks from the textures we created earlier. Before we take a look at these, let's create a material so that we can visualise what's going on. So open the Material Editor and create a new material. The type of material you choose depends on your preferred renderer. Since here I'm mainly demonstrating exporting to Unreal, I'm just sticking with the standard materials. But the same technique works just as well in V-Ray or Corona or any of the others. Because this is just a demo to show how the tiling works, I also won't create the complete material. I'm just going to demonstrate using the diffuse. So import the texture as usual and wire it to the materials diffuse input and then just assign the material to the floor. So when we created the plank, we ensured that UV channel 1 was mapped to match the exact size of the geometry. You can see this by the fact that all seven floor textures are displayed on each individual plank. Now let's use the macro to extract and randomise them, individually, by changing just two settings. But before we do that, an important note. Unless you're using V-Ray, you must go to the display rollout and disable the instancing engine. If you don't do this, then RailClone's UV manipulation tools won't work. V-Ray users can skip this step. With that done, go back to the macros properties. Enter the number of planks found horizontally in your texture for the number of tiles on U value. In our case, actually we had just one, but we can subdivide that into three to get a few more variations and to illustrate the principle. Next, enter the number of planks found vertically for the number of tiles on V value. In our example, we had seven. And that's actually all you need to do. We now have 21 variations of planks from one easy to manage shader setup. Best of all, this doesn't rely on any third party shaders, so it'll export to nearly anything. And you can also collapse it to an editable mesh without losing the randomization effect. This is useful, for example, if you want to share it with someone who doesn't have access to RailClone. The other setting here can be used to further crop into the planks. This can be useful if, for example, the source texture has grout or joins that you'd like to remove. There's also an option to disable stepped offset. This can be useful if your maps are a continuous tiling texture like a veneer. 
So that takes care of uh, the basics of materials, but how about randomizing the tint? Well, we do this with UV channel 2. But first, let's set the materials up correctly. So we'll create a new gradient ramp. Leave it on all its defaults, except for changing the map channel to 2. So what we're going to do is sample a small part of this gradient and then randomize the U and the V offset so that each plank picks up a different value. To make it easier to edit this effect though, I'm going to run it through a mix map. So I'm going to wire the gradient to a mix map's alpha input. And the reason for doing this is that it's easier to change the tint values just using the color number one and color number two's color swatches. Now let's combine this with the existing diffuse map wire an RGB multiply map between the existing diffuse map and the material. Wire the mix map to the RGB multiply map second input. And we're done. Previewing UV channel 2 in the viewports can be a bit of a pain in Max. So one way to do it is to ensure that the material itself is not being previewed. And then you can select the gradient or the mix map and enable show shaded map in viewport. And you'll be able to see the gradient applied to each plank. So now go back to the rail clone object. In the macro settings, enable random offset UV channel 2. Each plank now has a solid color instead of the gradient. That was easy. Um, this can now be used to tint the texture. Just to explain a little further what's going on here, uh, we can demonstrate by adding an unwrap UV modifier to make it easier to visualize. So add one of these and then change the map channel to 2, abandoning any changes, and just pop open the UV editor. You'll see that the UVs for each plank have been shrunk so that they're very small and they've been scattered around the UV space. In this way, they randomly sample any image. So it's simple really, the idea, and this can be used with any type of image, not just a gradient. You could also, of course, use different blending modes to recreate the options you have in the specialised maps like Rail Clone Colour. We don't need this for now, it's just for illustrative purposes, so delete it when you're done. Finally, we'll add a UVW map modifier. Ensure real world map size is disabled, set the mode to planar and change map channel to 3. As I've mentioned, this UV map will be used to bake the light maps. For a floor, it can be more efficient to create it in this way than to let Unreal unwrap it for you automatically. So that's the basic setup done, now we can export to Unreal. In this case, I'm just going to export via FBX as an individual object, but you could also use Datasmith. We'll cover using Datasmith with Rail Clone though in a future tutorial. So with the floor selected, go to File, Export, Export Selected. Choose FBX File Format and give it a name. Ensure smoothing groups and triangulation are checked and then save. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll import these assets into Unreal and recreate these materials so that they work in real time.